You're watching a High Wire Media podcast. Mile 2 matches its predecessor with a $23 million box office opening this past weekend. Terrifier 3 continues its remarkable run, while Enora posts the year's best per theater average. There's good news for several films at the box office this weekend with Paramount Smile 2, which despite competition from the gory indie darling Terrifier 3, is set to match the opening weekend of its predecessor with a $23 million launch from more than 3,600 theaters after earning $9.4 million on Friday, including $2.5 million from Thursday previews. Two years ago, Smile earned a $22.6 million opening in September, going on to gross $109.5 million domestically and $217.4 million globally against the $17 million production budget. Smile 2 only has a higher, slightly, slightly higher budget at $28 million and has earned positive reception with a B on cinema score and Rotten Tomatoes score of 84% critics and 86% audience. Good news, the good news for theaters is that none of this has come at the expense of Terrifier 3, which is continuing its draw in audiences, darling. Take on the challenge of watching the ultraviolet slasher threequel. In its second weekend, the Cineverse Bloody Disgusting release is headed for a $9.6 million frame, dropping just 48% from its $18.8 million start as it heads for an estimated two weekend total of $36.4 million. With this result, Terrifier 3 is set to gross at least $50 million against its minuscule $2.5 million production and marketing spend, becoming one of the top five horror films of the box office this year. With Halloween still ahead, all signs point to the film continuing to leg out. Also opening in the top five this weekend is A24's romantic drama, drama excuse me, We Live in Time, starring Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh, making $1.8 million from 985 theaters as it heads for an industry-estimated $4.3 million opening weekend. Reception for the film has been strong, with Rotten Tomato scores of 80% critics and 94% audience. And on the limited release side, Neon's Honora is set to have an incredible opening in New York and LA. Based on industry estimates, it's set to earn $650,000 from just six, th six theaters, giving it the best per theater average of the year at $108,000. Now on to our next topic. Matt Murdock is finally coming back to us. We finally have a release date for Daredevil Born Again. That's right, the wait for the long-awaited return of Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk just got a lot shorter. Marvel Studios has officially announced that Daredevil Born Again will be debuting on Disney Plus on March 4th, 2025. The news was confirmed during a recent panel at New York Comic Con. Ever since Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk returned to the MCU in Spider-Man No Way Home and Hawkeye respectively, Marvel fans everywhere have been wondering when they'll be able to see Daredevil and the Kingpin battle on screen again. While they would later appear briefly in other projects like She-Hulk and Echo, Daredevil Born Again promised to bring the gritty and realistic world of Hell's Kitchen back to the MCU continuity, but the road to the new show's development hasn't been an easy one. Just over a year ago, the entire series was reportedly scrapped and the show was forced to start from scratch, with rumors suggesting that this was because the re reboot was too disconnected from the beloved Netflix series that introduced the MCU's Daredevil. Perhaps that was a wise move on the part of Marvel Studios as Daredevil Born Again is now billed as a proper continuation of where the story of Netflix's Daredevil left off. While the series was always going to feature Charlie Cox as Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio as the Kingpin and John Bernthal as the Punisher, several other cast members and characters from the original show joined the cast including Wilson Bethel as Bullseye, Brian Wall as Karen Page, and Eldon Hansen as Foggy Nelson. New cast members that are joining the series include Michael Gandolfini. So what other projects is the MCU releasing in 2025? Daredevil Born Again releasing in 2025 all but assures that this upcoming year could be Marvel Studios' biggest yet. Three major motion pictures are set to dominate the box office in 2025, including Captain America Brave New World in February, Thunderbolt in May, Fantastic Four First Steps in July, and then on the Disney Plus front, Daredevil Born Again is expected to be joined by the long-delayed Ironheart series. As mentioned above, Daredevil Born Again will be released exclusively on Disney Plus on March 4th, 2025. Till then, you can get caught up on Matt Murdock's story so far with the first three seasons of Daredevil, which are available to stream on Disney Plus. Let me know your thoughts on the original Daredevil series on Netflix, and what do you hope to see in the upcoming new show with Disney Plus? And as we Get closer to the holiday season, our Arnold Schwarzenegger's most iconic Christmas movie is coming to streaming this November. 
It's turbo time. Get ready for some holiday cheer as Arnold Schwarzenegger's beloved Christmas classic, Jingle All the Way, comes to Hulu this November. Jingle All the Way stars Schwarzenegger as Howard Langston, an American workaholic dad, who goes on a wild last minute hunt to find the season's hottest toy, the Turbo Man action figure, for his son after he forgets to pre order it. Howard sets out on an epic odyssey to try and salvage Christmas Day for his son, Amy, played by future Star Wars actor Jake Lloyd. Howard runs into a host of problems throughout the day, starting with his rival, Myron Larrabee, played by Sinbad, an equally stressed out dad and U.S. Postal Service worker. The two torment each other throughout the course of the day, including fighting inside a shopping mall, a terror threat inside a radio station, and a confrontation in superhero and supervillain costumes. Closer to home, Howard also has to deal with the intolerable and cloying neighbor Ted, played by the beloved and iconic Phil Hartman, who steals the entire movie with his trademark wit. Ted has his eye on Howard's wife, played by Rita Wilson, and is determined to show Howard up while providing the best Christmas for his son. Ted even goes as far as bringing in his own reindeer, which are named after himself, leading to one of the best lines in the film when Jamie tells Howard that his mom is next door petting Ted. But of course, is Jingle All the Way worth watching? Upon its release, Jingle All the Way received mixed reviews from critics, but over time, it's gained a cult following. I've probably watched it maybe once every holiday season for most of my life. It became popular for its hysterical and crazy take on the holiday consumerism and Schwarzenegger's unexpected comedic chops as a stressed out dad. The film is also full of hilarious lines, whether intentional or not, like put the cookie down. Schwarzenegger is obviously known for his big action blockbusters like The Terminator and Predator, so it's great to see him switch lanes and take on a full-blown family comedy where he's able to make a fool of himself, and he truly does numerous times. It's a really enjoyable time time if you take the movie for what it is. So if you're looking for some nostalgia and holiday fun, mark your calendars for November 1st and add Jingle All the Way to your Hulu watch list. Blue Bud star Donnie Wahlberg is excited about possible spin-offs as much as fans are. After a massive 14 season run, CBS police drama Blue Bloods is coming to an end. After a five month hiatus during the farewell season, the, sp- the procedural has just returned for its final eight episodes. Since the show is so popular, fans are already speculating about the possibility of continuing with a new sequel or spin-off series. When asked about it by the TV insider, series star Donnie Wahlberg revealed he's as excited about the idea as fans are. During the interview, Wahlberg celebrated the series' long run and gave a shout-out to fans who tune in every single week to check out new episodes. When speaking about the possibility of continuing to play Danny Reagan, Wahlberg revealed there would be only one condition for him to come back, saying, quote, there's been a lot of talk about spin-offs, about various spin-offs, all types of concepts of the spin-offs. I for, mer- I, for me, personally, would say whatever happens next, if it's done with the spirit of Blue Bloods and done with the care that we try to put into Blue Bloods every week, it would be something that I would look forward to watching or being a part of either way. I've heard stories of prequels, sequels, you name it. For me, personally, I love the show. I've enjoyed working on it for 14 years, and like I said, whatever comes next, as long as it has family at its core and the spirit of Blue Bloods, then I'm all for it. Despite showing enthusiasm for a possible spinoff, Wahlberg remained, reminded fans that there's a final season of Blue Bloods still to air, and suggested that fans should enjoy the last ride. The actor added that first he's looking forward to watching those episodes with all of my incredible fans of the show and tweeting with them every Friday night for every final episode. And then we'll see what happens next. Earlier this month, another Blue Blood star spoke about the possibility of keeping that universe alive. Also speaking with TV insider Tom Selleck from, of course, Magnum P.I., commented that as long as the phone doesn't stop ringing, he'll keep on playing Commissioner Frank Reagan. Blue Bud's send-off is titled End of the Tour, and the series finale is set to air on November 29th. You can stream Blue Bloods on Paramount+. Plus. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think about Blue Bloods as a whole? Are you disappointed that it was canceled? And let me know where you want to see Blue Bloods head next in a prequel or a sequel or a spinoff? What stories do you think they could tell? And what do you think of the whole Blue Buds storyline? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that shiny subscribe button right down there. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Click it. Click it. Thank you. Thank you for clicking. And now on to our next topic. Gladiator 2 is receiving its first reactions and have called Ridley Scott's sequel unhinged and deliciously cinematic. Many can't believe Ridley pulled it off. Are you not entertained?
because just about everyone who's seen Gladiator 2 is taking to social media in praise of Ridley Scott's highly anticipated sequel. Although at least one viewer argued that the follow-up is largely uneven and lacks the emotional punch of the first film, many of the first reactions to the film are raving about the epic Roman opera, as well as buzzing about Oscar attention for Scott and star Denzel Washington, following a special screening Friday on the Paramount lot. Discussing film managing editor Andrew Salazar might have been one of the most critical, but even he had good things to say about Scott's direction. Saying, quote, Gladiator 2 works best as an acting showcase... It's largely uneven and lacks the emotional punch of the first film. However, Ridley Scott's direction is unhinged, framing this as an epic Roman opera. The visuals got the job done. Jillian Chilnigrian, apologies if I butcher her name, co-founder and editor of Offscreen Central, called the movie an absolute triumph. Saying Ridley Scott places you in the action in the arena centered on legacy and honor, among up, amping up the blood, battles, and biceps for something so deliciously cinematic. In another post... They wrote, Gladiator 2 is Hamlet as a Roman political opera, a brutal bloody battle of power and corruption with performances possessing an emotional weight of movie stardom. Can't believe Ridley pulled this off, and it's one of the few modern blockbusters that actually looks good visually. Don't speak, host Griffin Schiller wrote, Ridley Scott returns to the Coliseum to prove the world that he's still got it. Absolutely buzzing after Gladiator 2, a big Shakespearean tale of hope, utility, and power within a crumbling system. Denzel feasts in a show-stopping performance. Gladiator 2 premiering November 15th internationally and November 22nd in the U.S. and Canada. Excuse me. Meskel stars Meskel as Lucius, who previously witnessed Maximus, portrayed originally by Russell Crowe, die at the hands of his uncle in the first movie. Now an adult, he is forced to enter the Colosseum and fight to return glory to the people of Rome. And before we leave, don't forget to give your thoughts on the topics we covered in the comments section below. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinemagold. Your support helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, you want to pay them, and one day take this show on the road. As always, your support can help make that happen. Whether it's a dollar, five dollars, twenty, fifty, hundred, everything you give is very much appreciated and goes right back into this channel. So, once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.